Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. GAASI Sky Guardian completes first transatlantic flight of a male RPA. Journalists detained during Thailand cave rescue for drone flights. And FAA says avoid drone registration schemes. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Wednesday at 6.51 p.m. local time, a medium-altitude long-endurance remotely piloted aircraft produced by General Atomics Aeronautical Systems Incorporated made history as it landed at the Royal Air Force, Fairford in Gloucestershire, UK, and became the first male RPA to successfully complete a transatlantic flight. The GA ASI owned MQ-9B Sky Guardian took off from Grand Forks, North Dakota, USA on July 10th at 12.48 p.m. Central Daylight Time. The flight covered a 3,760-mile flight in 24 hours and 2 minutes. This historic event was a demonstration of the endurance and civil airspace capability of the MQ-9B Sky Guardian and is fitting to do this as a part of the centennial celebration of the RAF, said Lyndon Blue, CEO of GAASI. RAF Fairford will be the site of the RIAT Air Show from July 13th and 15th. The MQ-9B will be on static display during the show. Over the past 10 years, the RAF has operated GAASI's MQ-9 Reaper RPA in support of the NATO and coalition operations. The RAF is celebrating its 100-year anniversary, so GAASI sees the opportunity to fly the newest MQ-9 version, MQ-9B to RIAT. The RAF configuration of MQ-9B will be called Protector RG Mark I. You're watching Airborne Unmanned on Aero TV. We'll be back with more in a moment. Hello, fellow pilots. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. Well, we're headed off to Oshkosh for Air Venture, and we're really looking forward to it. Martha and I are going to be making a bunch of talks there. And we hope you'll come by and say hi to us. We'd love to meet you. And by the way, stay tuned right here to Prop Wash. We're going to be making some exciting announcements direct from Air Venture. Welcome back. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Global UAV Technologies, together with Enjoy Robotics Incorporated, a compliant UAV mapping, training, and consulting business, and High Eye Aerial Imaging Incorporated, have concluded the first UAV mapping mission over a major Canadian metropolitan city. The first of its kind operation, flown over the downtown core of Victoria, British Columbia, on June 14, 2018, was completed for the City of Victoria's Emergency Management Division and conducted alongside members of Transport Canada. 3DR Makers of SightScan, a drone software platform for construction and engineering teams, has announced that SightScan users can now capture and use structurally detailed thermal imagery on their projects. This is made possible through a one-of-a-kind integration with DJI M210 Dual Gimbal Drone, equipped with Zenmuse XT Thermal Camera and Zenmuse X4S, making it easy to capture and combine thermal and RGB imagery. USS Coronado and Air Test Evaluation Squadron 1 completed the first comprehensive initial operational test and evaluation for the MQ-8C Fire Scout, June 29th. Results from this IOT&E will inform decision makers on how best to integrate the Navy's newest unmanned helicopter with littoral combat ships and other platforms. Information about the Air Force MQ-9 Reaper has been posted on the dark web by a hacker according to a threat intelligence firm. A hacker reportedly broke into an Air Force's captain's computer and stole documents including the officer's private list of airmen working on the MQ-9 program, as well as training and maintenance information. 
Next week, aviation's greatest event begins. And aviation's most comprehensive news service, our parent company, the Aero News Network, will have dozens of people there reporting on every aspect of the aviation world, including drones. Our Airborne Unlimited programs will be expanded and presented every weekday from Oshkosh, starting Monday, July 23rd, and continuing through Friday, July 27th. Log in to airbornetv.net to see them all. Daily news stories will be presented 24 hours a day at aero-news.net, and we promise to be thorough. More info to follow. That was our Man Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. A journalist attempting to capture images above the Tom Long Cave system during the rescue of the soccer team that had been trapped for nearly two weeks was detained by authorities for flying a drone too close to a helicopter in the area. The incident occurred last Sunday, according to media reports. The drone was being used to give a media team better access to the cave entrance, where the team was emerging and being placed into ambulances. The media had initially been allowed to set up near the cave entrance, but later had been pushed back to an area nearly two miles from the cave to provide a clear path for rescuers and emergency services. The journalist, who was not named, initially said he had been authorized to fly the drone near the cave entrance by the Royal Thai Air Force, but RTAF officials denied that such permission had been granted. All team members and their coach were successfully extracted from the cave on Tuesday. The FAA is warning drone owners, especially hobbyists, about people offering to help register their drones with the agency. The FAA drone zone is all you need, and it costs only $5. There are a number of entities that offer to help drone owners and operators file an application for a registration number. Some attempt to mimic the look of the FAA's website with similar graphic designs, and some even use the FAA's logo to allegedly suggest they are somehow approved by the agency. They aren't, and you could be wasting your money. The FAA neither regulates these entities nor will speculate on their legitimacy. However, the agency has recently received reports of vendors charging exorbitant fees, up to $150 for this service. The actual FAA registration fee is $5. For that charge, hobbyists receive one identification number for all the drones they own. All others pay the registration fee for each drone they intend to operate. The FAA strongly advises drone owners to avoid registering your unmanned aircraft anywhere but at the FAA drone zone. It's the only way to make sure your drone is legally registered and that you've gotten your money's worth. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.